Hi, welcome to the Engineering Economy uh, series of lectures. This is lecture one, part one, and we will be following the Chan S. Park uh, fifth edition. You can get it as an e-text. We'll start out with um, a section of chapter three where we deal with cash flows, how money comes in, how money goes out, and how do you value it. My name is Sundar Atre, and I'll be your instructor for this course. Uh, I provided some contact information over here. Feel free to interact with me as frequently as you need to. Um, I'm here for you. So uh, the course website is in Blackboard and we'll also be using the MyLab uh, website from Pearson for the midterms, uh, homeworks and uh, uh, quizzes. Midterms, I'm still debating whether to add it through my lab or uh, to offer it uh, as a proctored exam. I'll keep you posted about progress depending upon the bugs that we work out on this website to make sure that it goes smoothly. In terms of the course structure, um, as I've provided in the syllabus, you will have eight assignments, five quizzes, and so that would be half your grade. The other half of your grade will be the two midterms. There'll be no final for this course. In terms of the engineering economy process, you have a project and you want to plan ahead to see whether it's worth doing, um, how much should you invest, whether you should invest at all, what kind of issues should you take into account when you go ahead and uh, make this investment, what should you put in place, how much is it going to cost, what options in machines would you work, what options in uh, productivity will you work, how much does it take for me to market this? And compared to the investment that I make and how long I have to wait to get a return on investment, what profit should I expect to make? And then finally, the big question, is it worth doing this at all? Or are you better off doing something else or nothing at all? So to be able to plan for expenditure uh, and combine that with product design and service design, uh, is an important aspect of profit making in any business. And that's what we hope to do with the engineering economy process that we will learn. For instance, right, there's a company that has made a new biodegradable plastic and uh, has a certain tonnage that it plans to make available to the market. How much should it invest? Okay. And then accordingly, what does it translate in terms of production cost? Right? If I were to buy a ton of this polymer as opposed to something else, uh, how much is it going to cost the customer? How much is it going to cost me to produce? These are some kinds of questions that can be asked and answered uh, with the learnings from this course. Say you're working in Intel and there has to be a big factory upgrade. In those kinds of technologies, you're talking about multi-billion dollar investments. And so how do you know how much you're going to get back and over what range uh, of time and what range of products that are going to go out with these kinds of chips, right? How many people do you need to add? What kinds of machines? What kind of maintenance costs? These are all some things that would come in very handy and how to do that uh, even in a project of this complexity can be learned and implemented from things that we learn here. Another one, right? cellulosic ethanol, so has an important bearing on the energy sector. Right? And the issue is what is the risk involved if gasoline prices change, how does that impact the profitability of this venture? So risk analysis in an investment is one aspect that can be put into place from an engineering perspective. There was a time when there were a lot of ships being made because of globalization, plants in China, plants in Ireland, plants in Puerto Rico, and so shipping and shipbuilding was a big activity. Suddenly, there was a big uh, crash 
in the overall market and economies around the world. But ships that were ordered years ago are only getting delivered now. What do you do with it, right? I mean, it costs a maintenance to be able to have them in the port. And so do you just destroy them? Do you convert them to a luxury liner? What do you do with these things now? This is a big issue. Right? Airline industry is another one which has not been immune from uh, economic woes. Right? But there are still people that are looking at upgrading fleet because the penalty for a lawsuit when lives are lost uh, because of faulty maintenance running over fleet uh, is bigger than uh, the penalty for investing in new fleet. Right? Fleet, if you look at all these options, there are like all kinds of capacities, all kinds of distances they can fly, all kinds of uh, issues in terms of how long they could last, how many seats they have, how frequently they can fly, what maintenance they need, who you can buy it from is typically two major players, Airbus or Boeing. Right? So the question is, how do you adjust purchase of fleet related to what do you project the demand uh, for certain routes, uh, pricing of tickets, timing of these uh, spikes in uh, ticket prices, uh, spikes in costs for fuel. These are major issues to be dealt with. So with the booming economies in India and in China, there's an opportunity for several companies to try to go there and try to take advantage of the growing economies, 8 to 10% growth over a decade, two decades, right? So now the question is, okay, you want to inf invest in this infrastructure and suppose you're Disney and you have this big project going on, right? The question is you're operating in a new area, right? There are new laws and it's an unknown market, right? How much is it going to cost me? What's the risk involved? How can you estimate that? How can you influence an investment decision and an operation decision based on that? Right? Another area is the environment, right? And as population booms, uh, right, there's more damage on the uh, environment as state budgets sink, right? The ability to fix environmental problems due to human impact become weaker and weaker, right? So then the question is that using taxpayer uh, uh, investments, right? Especially in a weak economy, right? Public funds, whether it's building roads, uh, improving water bodies, so on and so forth, right? How do you invest in this? How do you look at a situation where you don't know what the revenue is going to be and there's going to be an upfront investment right. typically conducted by issuing bonds right how do you find out how much is it going to cost what is the environmental impact is it worth in undertaking is it possible to do it in another manner is it better to turn a blind eye and deal with it 20 years later these are all major issues so these are examples of what we do in an engineering economy process, right? You create and design engineering projects, right? And so that would have technical description to them. From there on, you begin to address safety, environmental and market issues, production methods, alternatives and so on. But the major thing is from there you build off from an engineer and try to put a dollar tag on what might it cost to do something one way as opposed to another way. How does it impact profitability? How does it in fact uh, impact how and when you get the money back? And what is the risk that you might lose everything or quite a bit? Right? And so based on that, you make some decisions, you provide some advice uh, to the company and hopefully it has a positive impact on the financial statements, its market value, its stock price. So the kinds of decisions that you're working on are typically cost reduction, plant expansion, equipment selection, whether to buy something or to lease it, whether to make something or buy it, right? 
how do you replace an equipment when do you replace it what is the productivity gain so as an engineer you're qualified to do a lot of these things and uh, impact major things in this manner now you might say okay all these things related to costs are all things that an accountant deals with but there's a major difference what an accountant does is keeps tag on what was already spent and what you have in hand so it deals with the past what you as an engineer ha have as an important role for the health of a company is to be able to anticipate how things are going to change in terms of the revenue stream based on uh, various decisions that you might take and so these are some things that uh, are opportunities for you to learn and this is one course that's going to save you a lot more money and make you a lot more money than any other course that you might have learned.